Hello and welcome back again. In this video I'm going to be looking at one of our slightly larger um, cheese knives um, that you can see here. Now what I'm hoping to do today is to um, explain the principle of doing these and this will basically cover lots and lots of products because we do lots of cheese knife sets cheese knives, mini cleavers. The principle of fitting all um, the handles to these is the same for all of them. So to save me doing many, many videos and other people scrolling through many, many videos, which are essentially all gonna say the same thing. Hopefully, as I said, I'm gonna cover everything um, that you need to know about making one of these um, in this video. It's pretty straightforward, as are most of the things that I do, um, but we'll run through everything and a couple of little bits and pieces that you might not know and the way I do things anyway, not necessarily the way you might want to do is it always depends on the tools and the time and the blank that you've got. Um, but hopefully this will cover the, the basic principle and make doing one of these pretty straightforward. I'm starting off with a blank 120 mils long and this is 30 mil square it doesn't have to be that size you can make these as big or as small as you want but i've chosen that size um, because it's about hand size um, if you look at that i can get my hand around it if you want a smaller one that's fine if you want a bigger one equally that's fine but you need to tr try and kind of get them in proportion the next thing i'm going to do is mount this in a chuck on the lathe and we're going to drill the relevant sizes so i'm going to mount this in the lathe uh, i'm going to measure the parts uh, of the kit and i'll show you how those um can be measured on the dr relevant drill sizes uh, in a moment um, but let's mount this and um, get ready for the drilling part i'm starting with a center finder in here just to put a small pilot hole through to make sure we drill in the right um location right let's get the lathe going at around about 700 that was a good guess 745 that will do so we'll bring that up i'm going to hold the jacobs chuck when drilling on the lathe to make sure the jacobs chuck doesn't come out of the tailstock end So I've now got my starter hole there and I'm now going to use my six and a half mil drill to drill in. Obviously the, the depth I'm going to drill is the depth of the tang at least here. Hopefully you'll see there is no movement on the drill having used the centre finder. Am I measuring it? I'm not measuring it because I know I've gone in plenty deep enough there. I'm just going to use my calipers just to double check. I've gone in 27 millimetres, that's how far I've gone in. Way longer than the actual tang can I, there we go um, way longer than the actual tang is so that's not a problem at all that's deep enough the other thing that i need to say is um, please be careful with with these parts they're really sharp so hold it on the flat side if you want to and we can just feel how that's gonna i think that's gonna push in it feels quite tight but it should be quite tight you don't want to lose handle right the next thing I'm going to do is turn this around because the kits, quite a lot of our kits, come with these tiny little end caps here. Um, so I'm going to measure the end cap, which isn't 26 millimeters, which is what my calipers say, because they keep going wrong. Right, let's try again. Um, 4.9 millimeters um, is that one. I'm going to drill a five millimeter hole for that. Um, you could try four and a half millimeters. It depends how hard your wood is um, at the end of the day. I'm going to do five millimeters because I'm going to glue that in a bit later. So once again, I've got my center finder and then I'll go on to the five millimeter drill. Thank you. 
So what we've got now is a little hole at this end and a slightly bigger hole at this end and now what we're going to do is mount this between centres on the lathe. Um, if you decided you didn't want the end cap you would have to mount it in a way that enabled you to just have a wooden um, end so you'd need to support it at one end. It's a little bit more difficult to do, um, it's not impossible, many many people do it, um, you just have to remember when you're dealing with the handle end that's all wood around the end. When it comes to finishing off I always if I'm using a, a chisel attack it in this direction rather than in that direction because if you're supporting it only at one end taking it that way puts pressure and you're pushing against the piece of wood which is trying to knock it off center always go that way if you can but this particular one as with a lot of our kits has got two ends to the kit so you can turn between centers makes it much much easier and hopefully more enjoyable as well Whilst we sell the dead centres here, if you don't, they're not very expensive, they're, I don't know, five, six quid, something like that. I, I always use one of these. But if you don't have one, what you can do is, bear with me a second, if you've got a chuck, like so, with a scrap piece of wood, turn it to a point and you will then have a dead centre, but you will have to recenter the point that you're using here every time you use it to make sure it is centered you don't want it moving around like that otherwise your handle will be moving as well so that's another option if you don't have a dead center um, i would get one um, without question however if you don't have one and you want to get crack that's another alternative that you can do the other alternative of a dead center is you haven't got a great big chuck with its sharp bits winging around at the end of the lathe so let's just pop this in here we're going to get it nice and tight in there we're going to turn it on really high speed because we're going between centers it can stall so if you put too much pressure when you're cutting it will simply stop the wood and the centers will keep turning but you can keep tightening it up um, without any problem at all and we're going to turn this just roughly round for the time being Now I can see the extent of the knot in there, but never mind, um, we'll still crack on and see if we can turn, remove or just do something with that um, shortly. The next thing I'm going to do is just double check that I've got my ends absolutely flat so the parts that I fit are going to fit in flush with the wooden handle. The next thing I'm going to do is make the tenon that will take the ferrule, this part here. So I'm going to um, fetch a pencil that I've forgotten. Where are we? One pencil. Right, uh, where's my ferrule gone? Right, I'm going to measure, just put the ferrule on there. And I'm just going to put a little mark on the wood for the length that it needs to be. It needs to be just fractionally shorter than the length of the ferrule on the inside. You could use calipers to measure it if you want to. I just find doing it with a, um, actually using the ferrule is a better idea. I am however now going to use the calipers to measure, if they're working still, yeah, the diameter that I need to cut to. So I'm popping the calipers into there to find that oh, it's, damn things keep going off come on it's not five millimeters zero that's what we want to start with right 12.5 12.6 i'm going to lock them off at that so it now doesn't matter whether they work or not and that's the diameter that i need to turn to on here The advantage of turning between centres is that I can take this off the lathe, check some of the fittings and then put it back on the lathe again without any issue, which is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to take that off, I'm just going to check the ferrule fits. It's a bit tight to be honest, I thought I'd taken it down slightly too far. That is a little bit tight, too tight, so 
fraction more off that. Does the end cap fit? Yes, that's that's quite tight. That will probably be a push fit as well at the moment. And the reason for that is because of movement in the wood. When you drill or cut wood, it releases tension and the wood moves slightly. So if you want to drill, as an example, a 10 millimeter hole in a piece of wood, you might have to drill it two or three times to actually get your 10 mils because you'll drill into the wood, you'll take the drill out, it's hot, the wood moves slightly and probably just fills in that hole slightly. So you might need to wait for it to cool and re-drill it. And wood, of course, moves all the time with the moisture um, and temperature. Right, let's pop that back on there and we're just going to take a tiny little bit more off. Not too much pressure. I want it to be um, fixed securely, but I don't want to put too much pressure at this end here. Um, so the head, so the dead centre splits the wood. So that's quite important. So you just need to be a little bit careful. That's fine. That's going to go fine. We'll take a tiny little bit more off there. That's ideal. Um, it, it's not quite gone all the way down yet. I don't want to push it on at this point because um, we're not fitting it just yet. And now we can look at turning the rest of the handle. So what I've also done is measure the end of my end cap which is about 9.7 millimeters and I've just shaped a little bit to be around about the same size on the end here but you don't have to um, I'm just doing it on this particular one if they're not exactly the same size it doesn't matter let me find the one I've already made there we go so you can see um, on the end of, of this one this was the the sample that um, come on come on camera here we go right you can see the end of that is much bigger than that and it still looks quite good um, on the end there so but for this one I've turned it around about the right size now I'm going to just roughly sand this and then I'm going to stop I'm not going to finish this and the reason for that is there is absolutely massive hole in this piece of wood it's a huge chuck I was hoping it was only going to be a little one um, but it's massive so I don't think this handle will be any good but um, we'll just finish the video because I've pretty much shown you everything that you need to do. All we need to do then is just finish this and then look at the assembly. So I've just literally put some sanding sealer on there and um, just to bring the, the colour up of the, um, of the wood. Um, you can see the size hole. I actually think that's quite attractive and I'm going to take a photograph of it um, because what I like to do with these things is show continuity. What you've seen me make on the video is the picture that you will see on the website. I think it's quite attractive um, in there. However, um, maybe not practical because this is for um, in a kitchen and it's going to need to be washed and the last thing you want is a load of water filling up that handle but anyway let's go on and look at the assembly so we can take it off um, the lathe we can check our end cap which i think in, on this occasion is actually going to be a push fit um, if i drill that out again I, with the same five millimeter drill i expect i might need to glue it I would really always recommend with all the parts of these types of kits just to put a little dab of glue in. So I'm going to just for the sake of this that you can see how easily that went in, probably a bit too easily and equally I could if I had some nails and there we go, I can pull it back out again. So a tiny little bit of glue just inside the end and then push that in there. For this end um, I would recommend you also put some glue in because again as I said earlier these have got to be washed um, and therefore the last thing you want is any glue um, sorry any water getting down and staying in there because it will go mouldy and make it horrible so I would put glue down there before we fit um, the other parts possibly even a tiny bit of glue um, either in the ferrule or just around the edge but I mean a really small bit that's going to push onto there now it's important that the ferrule goes on next so 
there we've got that bit there inside there should be full of glue and now all we need to do is to actually as well as lose the pencil push the blade into there now um, the way I do this um, is to put the blade flat in a vise and I just basically just tap the end that's another reason why these end pieces are really quite good I can just tap with a little rubber mallet on the end to secure that in place and then we'll have finished the job so there we go there is my finished um, cheese knife handle in actual fact I didn't need to hammer that on I just pushed it on by hand but the fitment varies with every different piece of wood that you have um, now I said I was going to talk to you about acrylic handles you can do these with acrylic handles the principle is the same except when it comes to drilling the hole for the tang the tang remember is the bit that sticks inside here um, because acrylic will not move you won't cut a, um, a ridge through it it'll just split and fall apart so in that case you need to drill a hole as close to the size of the tang as you can if you can't get it exactly right make it fractionally bigger and it then has to be glued in place and it will have to set um, but that is basically it so you can see the side the handle is kind of hand size this particular one has got an extended ferrule there we just thought it was quite a nice looking kit um, to be honest if you don't want a full set of cheese knives we do those as well um, but hopefully that covers the principle of this type of kit be it this cheese knife be it a mini cleaver set that we do um, salad server sets that we do um, anything that's a double-ended kit basically with a ferrule that is generally the way that we that we do it so as always i hope that's been helpful um have a look at the website i'm going to go and take a photograph of this now it'll be at the end of the video and it will also appear on the website with its lovely big hole there thanks very much for watching enjoy your turning enjoy your workshop and whatever you do obviously make sure you do it safely until next time bye bye for now